Hey everybody, I want to talk a little bit more about orders of elements in direct product groups. So before we get to the theorem, let's work on this first example. So in Z2 cross Z3, this direct product group, what is the order of the element 1,1? One, one? You'll remember the order of an element is the number of times you need to add it to itself until you get back to the identity. So when you're computing the order of an element, you can almost just start computing the cyclic subgroup generated by that element. Okay, so the cyclic subgroup generated by the element 1,1, one, one, well, it contains 1,1. One, one. You add 1,1 one, one to itself to get 2,2, two, two. but in Z2 cross Z3, 2,2 two, two is the same as 0,2. Add 1,1 one, one to that to get 1,3, but 1,3 in Z2 cross Z3 is 1,0. Add 1,1 one, one to get that to get 2,1. And then finally add 1,1. One, one, oh, sorry, that should be 0,1 since we're in Z2 cross Z3. Add 1,1 one, one to that to get 1,2. And finally add 1,1 one, one to that to get 2,3, which in Z2 cross Z3 is 0,0. Zero, zero. Um, so we see that the order of this element, which you write by putting the element sort of inside of these absolute values is equal to six. We had to add this element to itself one, two, three, four, five, six times before we got back to the identity, which is zero, zero in this group. Our theorem gives a um, less computationally intensive way of finding the order of an element. In a direct product group, the order of an element, right? So little g1 lives in the group capital G1 and little gn is an element in the group capital GN. The order of that element, so the order of that element is the least common multiple, you know, the smallest number that all of these individual numbers divide into and these individual numbers are just the orders of G1, G2, et cetera, Gn in their individual groups. So here we could have used the theorem to compute that the order of 1,1 one, one is equal to the least common multiple of the order of one in Z2, comma, the order of one in Z mod three Z, because those are my component groups in this direct product. And then the order of one in Z two is two. One plus one is two, which is zero in Z two. The order of one in Z three is three. That's one plus one plus one is three, which is zero in Z three. And then the least common multiple of two and three is six. All right, so this theorem is agreeing with our computations and, and the theorem is true in general. Let's do another example. Oh, a remark. We found an element in this group that has order six. What's the size of this group? The size of Z2 cross Z3 is two times three or six. So in this group of size six, we found an element of order six. That means this element one one generates all of the group. So this group is cyclic. Whenever you have two cyclic groups of the same size, they're isomorphic. So Z2 cross Z3 is isomorphic to Z6. By contrast, Z2 cross Z2 is not isomorphic to Z4. And that's one of the main points of this video that I'll touch again upon at the end. Okay. So you might not have expected it, but Z2 cross Z3 is a cyclic group. It's of size six, therefore it's isomorphic to Z6. Just find an isomorphism by sending one generator to, to, to by sending a generator to a generator. Um, yeah. Okay. 
in Z5 cross Z8, what is the order of this element 2, 4? Let's first use the theorem. So by the theorem, the order of this element 2, 4 should be equal to the least common multiple of the order of 2 in Z mod 5Z and the order of 4 in Z mod 8Z. Two and five are relatively prime. So the order of two in Z mod five Z turns out to be five. I have to go two, four, six, two, four, six, which is one. And then once from I'm at one, I add two to get three, and then add two to get five, which is zero in Z mod five Z. The order of four in Z mod eight Z is two, just because four plus four is eight, which is zero in Z mod eight Z. And then the least common multiple of five and two is 10. Okay, so let's compute this by hand as well. We should find that the order is 10. So computing the order of an element is almost like finding the cyclic subgroup it generates. So first we have the element two, four. Add two, four to get four, eight, but eight is zero. Add two, four to get six, four, but six is one in Z mod five Z. Add two, four to get three, eight, which is zero. Add two, four to get five, which is zero, four. You know, we're zero in one coordinate, but not in the other. So we have to keep going. Add two, four to get two, eight, which is zero. Add two, four to get four, four. Add two, four to get six, which is one. And then um, eight, which is zero. Add two, four, sorry, that six should be one. Add two, four to get three, four. And finally add two, four to get five, eight, which is zero, zero in Z mod five, cross Z mod eight. All right, so the order of this element, two, four, we had to add it to itself, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. So the order of this element is 10. Agreeing with the theorem, which makes us happy. And now you should start to see where these least common multiples come in. You know, the order of two in Z mod 5Z was five which means every fifth element, we have a zero in the first coordinate. And the order of four in Z mod eight Z was two, which means every two terms, we have a zero in the second coordinate. Okay. Well, the least common multiple comes in because if we have a zero in the first coordinate every five terms and a zero in the second coordinate every two terms, what's the first spot at which they line up? Well, that's the least common multiple of five and two which is the 10th term. Wonderful. OK, so I've described this theorem in a product group. The order of an element is the least common multiple of the orders of the individual terms in each individual group. A consequence of this theorem is that if two groups are cyclic, G1 and G2, then their direct product is cyclic if and only if their sizes are relatively prime. So let me talk through this consequence a bit. We saw in our first example that Z2 cross Z3 is cyclic. It was generated by this element 1, 1, which we saw had order 6. Okay, And so we have a group of size 6. It has an element of order 6. That element generates the group. So um, so that uh, that group is cyclic. It's isomorphic to Z6. All right, Z5 cross Z8. Well, five and eight are relatively prime. This group is also cyclic. One of its generators is one, one. You know, what's the order of one, one? It's the least common multiple of the order of one in Z5. 
comma the order of one and z8, which is um, the least common multiple of five and eight. And you can see now where relatively prime is coming in. Since five and eight are relatively prime, their least common multiple is just their product. So five times eight is 40. So here we have a group of size 40, and we have an element inside that group that has order 40. So this group is cyclic. It's um, isomorphic to Z mod 40 Z. By contrast, we, we know well that uh, Z mod 2Z cross Z mod 2Z is not cyclic, right? It's the Klein 4 group. It's not isomorphic to Z mod 4Z. And we can sort of use these LCMs to see that. What's the order of an element G1, G2, where G1 is in this first group and G2 is in the second group? Well, by our theorem, it's the least common multiple of the order of G1 in the first group, comma, the order of G2 in the second group, okay? And then it turns out that in Z2, Z2, the possible orders for an individual term are just one or two. So the biggest you could make this LCM is the least common multiple of two and two, which is two, okay? So, um, so I should put an inequality here. The biggest you can make this list, least common multiple is just the least common multiple of two and two. So here we have a group of size four, but any element has order at most two. So no element generates this group and it's not cyclic. Let's do a similar example for Z3 cross Z9. So we'll see that this is not cyclic. What's the order of an element? Well, the order of an element G1, G2 by our theorem is the least common multiple of the order of G1 in Z3 and the order of G2 in Z9. Okay. In Z3, elements can have order one or three. In Z9, elements can have order one, three, or nine. So this least common multiple is at most the least common multiple of three and nine. And what is the least common multiple of three and nine? It's nine. Okay, so here we have a group of size 27, but any or element has order at most nine. So no element generates this group, and this group is not isomorphic to Z mod 27Z. Okay, so we saw in this video that Z3 cross Z9 is not isomorphic to Z mod 27. We saw that Z2 cross Z2 is not isomorphic to Z4. But five and eight are relatively prime. And so Z5 cross Z8 is isomorphic to Z40. And two and three are relatively prime. So Z2 cross Z3 is isomorphic to uh, the cyclic group of size six, Z6. So, this will be important in our following videos where we talk about the fundamental theorem of uh, finite abelian groups. So, uh, you know, you can write any finite abelian group as a direct product of cyclic groups of prime power order. And the prime power order comes in because, sure, Z6 is an abelian group of size six, and six is not prime, but you could write it as this direct product of groups of prime power order. You know, maybe Z40 is a better example. Z40 is an abelian group of size 40, but you could write it as this direct product of, of cyclic groups of prime power order. You could write Z40 as Z5 cross Z8, where five is prime, and eight, which is two to the third power, is the power of the prime too. Okay. So in summary, I've told you how to find the order of an element in the cyclic group. It's a least common multiple of the orders of the individual terms. 
And this is helpful for your understanding of the fundamental theorem of algebra, fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups that we'll see next, um, but describes all of the finite abelian groups of a certain size up to isomorphism. Thanks so much.